guys, Daniel James here, and today I wanted to actually talk about um, something that's quite exciting for me. So, um, as you'll see in this vlog, I'm actually starting this one a few days earlier, so I may get a haircut, ignore that. Anyway, uh, so the reason this, this vlog is exciting for me, because uh, the project that I've been working on, and the reason I haven't been doing any of these videos or overviews for a while, is um, I'm going to be recording my music live for the first time ever it's only taken what like 10 years or something but finally um i'm gonna get the opportunity to go to air lindhurst uh so air studios in london and there i will be recording strings brass and i think some woodwind um on this new score i'm working on now at the point of making this introduction video i'm not sure what i can say about the project so this video will be one of two things it will either be me talking about the project I worked on and showing you the recording in process. And if I can't talk about it, then what we'll be doing is you'll get a montage first and then down the line when the project is released, I will have all these, all this footage that I'm gonna record now, such as the project that's behind me um, and such. And I'll be looking at what it took to go from writing a piece and then having uh, it recorded live. So that should be interesting. Um, Worth mentioning up front that the uh, the session is going to be uh, with uh, the London Metropolitan Orchestra, I think they're called, the LMO. God, I'm so sorry if I got that wrong, Andy. But um, but yeah, so hopefully this footage is enjoyable, but we'll uh, we'll see down the road. And um, yeah, hope you guys enjoy it, and I hope I do too. We'll find out in a few days. Basically, uh, once I've stemmed out my project and uh, what I do is I render all the, the MIDI files of the parts we're going to be recording. So in this case, we're going to be recording brass and woodwind, not woodwind, strings. Uh, we send that over to the orchestrator and what he does is he turns it into something that looks like this, which is basically just the sheet music. So then what I want to do is just double check that what is there matches what's in here because this is what the live players are gonna play. So what I don't want is, you know, to go to the session, they play this, and then it doesn't match with that. So when I try and import it in, I have to fix this to match this, or just delete whatever they played here so that I can maintain what I've got going on there. Um, so I don't wanna do that, so just gonna check that. And then once that's done, I need to render out the, uh, the stems. And for the recording session, what I do is I record a, a full mix so they have something to reference then I re uh, render out just the bits I'm gonna record, which is, uh, in this case, the strings, the brass, and the woodwinds. And then I render a version of everything but those. So that's what they can play along to. So they'll be playing along to the percussion, the choir, the synths, and the such. So as you can see here, the band's gonna be, uh, we've got some horns, some trumpets, we've got trombones, bass trombone, tuba, and we've got some, uh, you know, just a normal size string section. Well, not normal size, just regular sized. So this is basically just my life for the for the time being. Um, I have about 13 of these, I think, maybe 10. I I, I lost count. The, the, the Q count's been going up and down, but yeah, so basically I have three days, no, two days now, to uh, check over all these things that are being delivered, rendering out the stems and hoping that by the time I get to London, everything is correct. God help me. 
Hey guys, so now it is uh, one day left until I leave. I mean, I say one day, it's midnight Saturday into Sunday and I leave on Monday. So what I'm doing right now is uh, some last minute panic session. It's not panic, but essentially what I need to be, well, what I'm doing right now is I'm preparing all the projects that I've written and got approved. I'm now preparing the uh, the files that I'm going to need at the recording session so that the actual players can record to something uh, because obviously they've never seen the music before uh, so this will be the first time so they need to have a few things with which to play with so uh, what I've got like for example is uh, let's take this track I'm going to just play here Big action track, right? So when we get to the session, we can't just play the track and then have them do it. There's a few specific things we need to prepare. So uh, what we do is we take the session and we break it into uh, basically three stems. So the reference track will not count as a stem, but like the reference track, uh, we're gonna deliver that uh, so that they have something to listen to so they can hear what it's supposed to sound like altogether. But then what we do is we have uh, the orchestral only, which is just the parts we're gonna be recording. Um, this orchestra that we've got, we've got strings, brass, and woodwind. Uh, so, you know, there was no need, uh, we're not recording percussion or piano or synths, obviously, because we've got those. So we render out a stem that is that track that I just played, but just played by the orchestra. No drums. So this is what the um, yeah this is what the orchestra is going to be playing. Um, so we give that that's more for the uh, the engineer to know what they're supposed to be playing. So <laughs> he can listen to what they're playing and then listen to the stem that with the synth stem that I just showed you there, and go okay that's that's what roughly what it's doing. <laughs> Hopefully exactly what it's doing. Uh, and then we, we do a stem called uh, mix minus. So the mix minus is everything but what you're gonna record. So this is so that should the players want it, they can listen to everything but themselves. Um, so in this example, you know, it's gonna be mostly big. So we've got uh, a matto chin and the percussion. not recording choir so you have put all those things together and then and this is probably the most important one what you need to do is you need to create a click track right so that just sounds like this and so a lot of people get confused with how you do this the way I do it is what I do is I I, I got this click God, I forget what the clicks actually called let me just quickly have a look but um, the click is the URI U R E I click, and this is this is like uh, the standard one, from what I'm led to believe, and that's that that particular click sound. And then, so what you need to do is uh, go into your session, and this doesn't work all the time. I mean, I, there I'm sure there are better ways of doing it, but this is the way I do it because I never do uh, like this wouldn't work in a compound time signature like six eight or so. If I go from four four to six eight, like if I change that last number, this would fuck up and I'd have to do it manually. But what I do is I, I basically took that click sample and I made a contact instrument out of it, okay? So that when I push a key, I get a click. And then what I do is in my DAW, I create a MIDI clip that's just one fourth. It's just, you know, so that you're at the tempo. Like if you're in four four, you know, like you need a fourth. And so I put one fourth and then I just copy that for the duration of the length of the track, plus two bars before it starts. So there's a counting. And then I just render that as a file. Um, and then, like, I find that's the best way to do it because in that way, what I'm actually doing is, uh, like, if there's any uh, tempo changes, if there's any um, signature changes, not that that's relevant because I never have an accented downbeat, but uh, in that case, the, the click, because it's MIDI, will change with whatever the tempo is. So that way when you export it, you just have to export it once and you know that it's gonna be correct and you can listen. If you have something like 6-8, you need to go to the bars where it's 6-8 and change that quarter note to an eighth and then, you know, uh, do it as eighths so they have the correct, um, you know, division of, uh, of the actual beat. Um, 
but yeah, so there's, there's other things like th with this project, it's weird because we have a few different sessions um, here and there. So we have some recordings in uh, going on in China where we've got vocals like, uh, let's throw on OAOB here. Um, so we have vocals like this. very beautiful and then uh, I've got my good friend Laura doing some vocals for me as well again very beautiful and then we had some other sessions for Matul Chin but we still need to do those we have they're gonna be the day after so they'll be recording those when I'm on the plane back so hopefully I get everything ready for that but for example uh, like a Matul Chin Jesus Christ. I can't find it. It's one of these. <laughs> but anyway, there's a lot of cues. Um, in total, I have about uh, 18, 18 of these, I think it is in the end. Uh, so I'm rend like, I've got to render all these out by tomorrow. And then once those are done, the, the reason I can do this vlog, by the way, is because it's still rendering. Um, but once they're all rendered, then we need to set up the Pro Tools session because Pro Tools is obviously the industry standard. Uh, so that when we get to the actual recording studio, they can load that up and then they can just record into that session. And then I can take that session with me on the plane and get all the files layered up, export them back into Cubase, which is where I'm going to be mixing. Um, I can do all that on the plane so I'm not losing it because it's a 12 hour flight. And then once I have them in uh, Cubase, I can. Um, I can probably start doing a rough mix on the plane, not like mix uh, with the EQ and stuff, but I mean, get levels and, you know, figure out what instruments need to come and go because I'll have all the stems that I've rendered for the session. So I'll be able to do like a rough kind of balance and then I can render, uh, I can render that balance into my actual uh, MIDI synth sessions and then do the final mix because we're doing the mix ourselves and it's going to be, um, it's going to be 5-1 mixed as well, so I'm going to have to um, get on that ASAP because the deadline for that is the 17th, so not much sleep. Last night we had an emergency queue needed writing, and it was 8 minutes. I had to write an 8-minute queue, and that took me from like 2 in the morning till 6 in the morning. So not much sleep, but hopefully it'll be worth it. This is going to turn into a long vlog, so I hope you guys uh, enjoy it. And um, as soon as it's recorded, I'm going to uh, I'm going to be showing you hopefully the actual synth sessions that I wrote and then comparing them with what the live orchestra did so we can see uh, how it compares. So exciting times, um, keep watching, I have no idea what's coming next in the video. <laughs>
been on them. Is this new uh, new LEDs? Have any been on there, lad? He's got it. Perfect. Jump it left. Yeah. Jump it centre. Yeah. No, jump it next one. Jump there. Combo. Yeah. Jump it right. Yeah. Biggity base bone. Yeah. Yeah. Was that Sushi Ambassador that looked like yeah. to me? It was. He's on the tuba. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Cool. <laughs>
Oh, sorry, yeah, so I have to switch that off. So, yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, great. Yeah. 20, please. 21. Yes, sir. No one playing 20 except first violins. So give us 18, please, Jake. Sure. Then 20, we'll just hear a first violin note, and everyone else joins in 21. Is 18? Magic. Again, I had a lovely vibe at the last take, so I'm happy with it. Yeah, great. Here it comes. It's 18 for the clicks. So we just recorded the uh, string sessions. We had three sessions of strings, two that had woodwinds uh, doubled in the session. So that was the first session yesterday afternoon and yesterday evening. A session for a, uh, you know, for a recording session like this lasts for three hours usually. And, um, I'm, and now what we need to do is, so there's a few different stages. So just off to my side here, they have a, a computer. So they record it you know, to the click track that we provided them as I showed you in a previous video. Uh, so they recorded to the the click track and the backing tracks, you know, the mix minus. And then what they're going to do now is edit it up together. Uh, and then, you know, once it's all tightened up and fixed, it's then going to be sent over to us so that we can put it into the mix. Um, but now what we've got to do is uh, we've 
they're, they're setting up out there ready for the brass session that starts at two. And then what we basically need to do is just blast through all the brass se section, sessions, sections, sessions, sessions, um, sessions, so that we have everything we need before I have to fly back tomorrow. Yeah, Jesus. Before I have to fly back tomorrow and uh, start mixing before the deadline on the 17th. So it's going to be an interesting few days. Uh, not much sleep, I imagine. But so far, it's so good. I'm having good fun. I mean, how can you not when you're sitting in front of this? <laughs> Do you feel awkward? <laughs> Sorry. I'm doing, I'm doing like the video blog part, you know, where I'm talking to the camera and they're watching me do it and they're probably laughing at me. Yeah, they're laughing at me. Okay. But anyway, so yeah, let's uh, pick this back up in the brass se session. I keep wanting to say section. Session. Let's do it. <laughs> Horns coming, yeah, OC version 2.
on uh, 39. Just cover for that from 39 then? Yeah, 39. There we go. Uh, that's the end of the recording at Air Studios. It was an absolutely insane experience for me um, to go from never recording live before to recording at Air Studios. Um, as you can see, it was a, hopefully, as you've seen through the, the whole process, it's been um, insanely, uh, insane is the word for it. It's been absolutely incredible. I, I mean, just the, just the, the quality of the players, um, for them to be able to sight read some of the chaos that I wrote and then um, you know just play it sight read it straight off uh, I, it was it was unbelievable um, the music sounded amazing you know they made it sound like I knew what I was actually doing Anne's cue sounded incredible um, the brass session you know blew me away I learned that you know three horns in a real environment can sound just as big as 12 horns in samples you know that's amazing and you know I'm gonna I'm gonna miss this place you know we did two solid days um, with two sessions in each and that um, you know and it was it was tough you know there was a lot of stuff to cover I think we did a whole what like 28 cues or something like this and you know we got it done but it was it was tough going but I you know I've got you know give credit to you know Jake for running the session perfectly and Andrew for um, basically covering my ass when it comes to um, you know uh, I say you know a lot when it comes to picking out the elements of the score that I wasn't hearing, uh, in, you know, the inconsistencies of intonation and things like that. I was mostly listening for uh, things that I would need to change in the mix or things that, um, ooh, thing, uh, that, that would be important when we get to the mix stage. So when we were all together, you know, it was, we covered our bases, which is good. So um, what I'm gonna do in the next video is we're going to be covering the mixing part of this project, but I may, delegate that to a separate video so that you guys can enjoy the footage we got from Air Studios. Um, and again, as you can see, incredible place. Uh, thrilled that I got to be here. You know, it was an honor. And I, you know, I thank all the people that allowed me to get here. It's been amazing. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next bit.
Try to run and check something out. Alright. Check something out. Let's go take a look. I'm just showing my live stream the room. This <laughs> way. <laughs> <laughs> Filming me filming. Well, I can just smash the three. That was going to happen. That was going to happen. Let's see what he says about the other thing first. But that was always going to happen. Did you get some of the music on the floor? They have this roof here. This roof. Oh, sorry, I'm dropping <laughs> that thing. And that goes up and down. So the uh, you can basically see. You can control the. Hey, there's Andrew. Right. And then for the video blog, there's you guys. So, you know, having a good look around. There's only 58 of you. But hey, hey look, there's me. It's still early yet in the US. So. Yeah, it's still early. But yeah.